Do you guys want to get artsy fartsy? <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to Flurn. I want to put my hand here. I think that'd be funny. My name's Aaron Nace. You can find me on Twitter at AK Nacer. All right, enough of that. Did you ever get called um, artsy fartsy when you were growing up? My mom, I swear, just thinks that's the funniest thing in the world because she knows it pisses me off. So she thinks it's the funniest thing in the world. Anytime she, I mean, I'm 28 years old. Anytime she still introduces me to everyone, it's like, this is Aaron. He's artsy fartsy. <laughs> Just like God, Bob. It, you know, it's just fun, and she loves me, and she—it's a compliment to her. And you know, why not? Artsy fartsy is fun. But like, if your son was an accountant, you wouldn't be like, "Oh, here's my son. He's an accountant. He plays with numby wumbies." Like, <laughs> oh, my son, he does numby wumbies. He's an accountant. Like that—that's not exactly. But that's kind of what it feels like to be called that. Have you guys ever heard of someone says artsy fartsy? Just a general tip for all of you guys who are not artists out there. We hate being called artsy-fartsy. I hate it anyway. <laughs> but today, you know what? We're getting artsy-fartsy with it because I'm going to just put it out there. Today, we're getting artsy-fartsy. We're doing this tutorial. Um, this actually, Chris asked if we could do this. It's actually pretty cool. Uh, combining multiple exposures to create like a really neat, it's just kind of artsy-fartsy type of image. I think you're actually going to be able to get some really cool results out of this. And... I kind of surprised myself in that I actually kind of like uh, the image that we're making today. So um, maybe I just am actually artsy fartsy, who knows. We're going to be putting together some images today. Um, I've got some trees here because, you know, trees are cool. I like trees. Uh, we've got a portrait of a girl that I took a few months ago. This is a friend of mine. Awesome. And we've got a picture that's blurry of inside. Basically, we want to kind of make it look like a window. So the first thing we're going to do is stick all these together. I don't know if we're going to use this twee. Tw <laughs> we might. Let's use our move tool and uh, just hit shift and click and drag. Stick that over there and we can close that out. All right, let's get our girl in there and let's get that in there. So it's really just kind of fun to combine photos like this and just kind of see what comes out. Like, just have some fun with it. That's kind of the whole point of it. Okay, the... First thing we want to do is like kind of prepare like our background or like our idea. I thought it would be kind of cool to have the tree be the main element in it, but everywhere the tree is visible, we instead are going to see the girl's face. So we have to figure out like, okay, that's what we want to do. Now, how do we do it? Um, a great way is just to make the tree into a selection. So I do want the tree into a selection, but I also want more of the tree visible. So what I'm going to do is just duplicate the background layer because that's what the tree's on. And uh, we're just going to stretch this out. There we go. You can, I like to zoom out when I'm doing this just so I can like see everything and uh, move it around and yeah, there we go. So that's pretty cool, I guess. I mean, we're totally doing something abstract. So there are no rules with this, by the way, um, which is cool because no one can tell you you're wrong. So enjoy that. So we've got our tree and uh, it looks great. It looks awesome. What I want to do is I do want to make this all black and white because I think if we're going artsy fartsy with it, we might as well go black and white as well. Let's just go to, you can go actually to image adjustments. Now, a lot of people will go to like desaturate. Um, what I would suggest instead is to go to like the black and white and you can actually choose what you want your black and white to look like. Now you can use this as an adjustment layer, but we really don't need to here. I'm okay applying it right onto the layer we're at. All right, let's stick that over there and we can kind of see what we're doing. Ah! Oh, oh, <laughs> who put like the hardest material ever under this countertop and told me to bang my knee on it. Okay, back to our tutorial. Um, you can see as I like change around my reds and yellows, this basically just takes whatever's in this image and uh, makes it brighter or not as bright. So we can see like doing my blues, maybe it'll give us a little bit lighter sky. There we go. That looks great. Now we're going to get our picture of our girl and we can put her in here. I'm gonna do the same thing with her as well. So we're just going to go to edit and then, sorry, image adjustments into black and white. All right, now with a person, it's a little bit more important. With a tree, it's not really that big of a deal. I mean, it's a tree, who cares? Um, but like you can adjust their skin tone. You really can do quite a bit here to make an image look either good or horrible. So I would suggest staying away from the horrible side um, <laughs> unless you're just into that sort of thing. There we go. That looks good. And then we'll do the same thing with here. So this one again, we'll go to image adjustments and down here to black and white. 
it just gives you a lot more control than just hitting like desaturate because you can as you can see control it that's why it gives you more control all right that's cool and it's going to make it look like kind of like she's looking through a window so we've got the image of her and the tree everything's pretty much good to go this is actually not that hard to do and you get some really cool results so the next thing I would like to do, let's just make that invisible. I need to turn the tree into a selection. There's a million different ways to do this, guys. I'm gonna show you the easiest one, the one that I think you're gonna wrap that brain around. Click on your layer here, okay? What you wanna do is go to select and you wanna go to color range. Now, I know it's black and white, but that's okay. So select and then go down to color range. Then you can actually click on your tree. There we go. If you click on your background, see it kind of switches, click on your tree. Now, I know it looks weird because when you when you're looking in this mode anything that's actually get that away from my face my face is going to be up on that top corner there when you are in this mode anything that's white is actually what gets selected and anything that's dark does not get selected so i know it looks inverted and it looks horrible but that's actually how we want it to look so click on the area you want to be selected in this case it's the tree and you can see clicking around just kind of like you know changes that ever yeah that looks good so we'll hit OK. Again, this is not an incredibly like precise art here. We're just kind of playing around and uh, making fun. So we've got that as a selection now. We can do whatever we want with the selection. You could like fill it with blue and you'd have a blue tree. But I don't want a blue tree. I want something else. So let's make our girl visible now. You can see the selection stays active. Selections, they don't have anything to do with like layers or channels or anything like that. Selections are their own thing. And uh, so you can use them like if you create them on this layer, you can still use them on a different layer. So what we're gonna do, we have a selection. Now we're going to click on this button right down here. It's a square with a circle in it. It's the add layer mask button. So let's click on that and check that out. Basically it uses the selection that we made to define where this girl is gonna be visible. Awesome. Now I don't want her right there. So if I just like click and start moving her around, look what happens. The tree, the whole selection, it just kind of like ruins the whole effect and we're very really mad and Aaron taught us to do something stupid and I don't want this and don't worry guys I'll show you how to change it so if you don't want everything to like move around like that what you want to do is oh I can zoom in check this out by the way if you don't know you can hold down the control key on a Mac and then like zoom in boom I'm gonna start doing that in episodes you can click right here on that little chain link between the layer and the layer mask and that unlinks them so what you can do now is just click on your layer and you can move only your layer around and your layer mask stays in place. Oh my God, that is hot. That is awesome. So your layer mask is staying in place. Uh, uh, conversely, you can move just your layer mask around and your layer will stay in place. Pretty cool. So let's, I don't know, make this a little bit bigger maybe. I want her like really just look like she's the, the queen of the tree landia. There we go. It's kind of cool. Like her outfit kind of goes with the feel and the, the general look and things like that of the image, which I dig. Okay. If we do want, let's just say, you know, like it looks pretty good, but this background right around here, it's a little too dark. It's sorry. It's a little too light. Like we kind of want that to look more like tree, right? Instead of, because oops, I'm going to hold down shift and we'll just disable that layer mask. Right now it's just showing what the background is. I don't want to mess with this layer mask that's already on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to group the layer with itself. So command G, I'm going to put a layer mask on the group. Now guys, you don't have to do this. If this is like too much and you're like, uh, no, I don't want to do that. Um, don't worry about it. This is just an extra bonus step. So I grouped the layer with itself and I put a layer mask on the group. That just keeps me from having to mess with this layer mask down there. And now I'm going to grab my brush tool and paint black at hundred percent. And this is just going to paint away that layer wherever I decide to paint. And the reason I'm not messing with the original layer mask is if I did decide to do this, what would happen is let's say like I painted away something like her face there. Okay. And then I decided I wanted it back. It's going to paint back everything like that nice selection in the tree we made. Uh, and we don't want that. So let's just hit undo a couple times. And then now we can actually get what we want without messing with our original mask. We can just, make this uh beautiful and amazing and awesome isn't that cool i dig it guys this is actually i don't know it's kind of fun i was making fun of artsy fartsy but whatevs i like it we're gonna stick this over top of it because it's gonna make it kind of look like she's in a window now you don't have to do any cool things with selections here because basically it's just dark and light and anytime you have that you can use your layers blending modes to um make either the dark or the light visible uh very technical explanation there 
If I don't want my darks visible, all I have to do is change this from like normal down to screen. And that's what it looks like. So we can move this around too. And you can kind of just see it gives it like a little bit of a look like she's, maybe she's looking through a window. Maybe that's just a, just texture that's stuck over top of the image for no apparent reason at all. But we got the look that we wanted. I'm gonna full screen that and zoom in so you guys can see. Look at that artsiness and the fartsiness. It's all there. You know what, actually with like a, a decent crop, it's kind of cool, except this looks like it's cutting into her face. Maybe we can move that. Okay, so if you do that and you're like, yeah, everything looks great, you can still move things around. Like you're not, you're not restricted to where anything is. You, it still looks like it's cutting right into her face. Um, you're not restricted to where anything is. But let's see, maybe on the layer mask here, I do just want to paint that back visible like just right there. And we'll just pretend that the tree actually looks like this. Like, oh yes, that's what the tree looks like. Now she doesn't have nastiness cutting into her face. Perfect. And you are ready to go on the show with your artsy fartsy patrol. Enjoy it. In case you're wondering what this is, it's a light stand. <laughs> this is Flurn, and we're all about teaching you how to get better at Photoshop photography. Why is the light stand right here? And I included it in the frame for uh, on purpose because it's holding a flag. And I'm going to show you guys just exactly what that does right now. So that was a little look up the skirt of Flurn. You get to see how I flag my light because we've got rim lights back there and I don't want it like cra crazy camera glare and stuff like that. So we flag the light so the light doesn't get into the lens of the camera, but you can still see it on me and it's nice and beautiful and makes me look cool. That's how we roll on Flurn. Thank you so much for watching Flurn. If you enjoy being a part of the family, I enjoyed having you. We'll see you guys soon. Bye everyone. You are... You artsy fartsy mother.